all to join me in um, the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, could um, I have a motion for approval of the school board meeting minutes from the Tuesday, January 13th school board meeting? So moved. Second? Thank you, Mary. Um, all those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. Um, comments from our student representatives. Good evening, Robert, everyone. Middle school. Oh, middle school first. Oh. Um, the seventh and eighth grade students participated in an annual career fair and a job shadow. Uh, many students from the eighth grade enjoyed the experience. Emily Spidell said it was interesting to learn about the work life, and I wish I could have seen more. Kisa Tiberi described it as a fun and entertaining experience, and seventh grade students also enjoyed it. Mary Perkins said she loved how everyone who came really seemed to enjoy their job. This past week, the eighth grade students took two state tests, the NAEP, the National Assessment of Education Program, and the MIYHS, Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey, and the MEAs are March 2nd through the 13th. February vacation this year is the 16th through the 20th, and the, this month on the 23rd, we're lucky to have Jane Hitchcock visiting our middle school to teach us about cyber safety. There's also a parents' night on February 24th for any parents who would like to also learn about cyber safety. Spirit week for the middle school is March 16th through the 20th. The middle school dance is the 27th. Indoor track started on Monday. And Chuanki this year will cost $150, and those checks should be handed in by April 16th. And any parents requesting a hardship can contact Mr. Conley. That's all. Any questions? Could you just briefly give me an idea of what Spirit Week means? Spirit Week is we're going to have a whole week of, um, there's going to be like different categories for every day. So I think um, one of them is going to be like a collar day where every grade is assigned a collar and you get to like wear a collar that day. I think we're going to have a cape day where you show like cape spirit. So every day is just going to be a different. Thank you. Thank you. And now high school, <coughs> Andrew and Sarah. Um, let's see. We had a couple uh, exciting weeks with the election of a new SAC president, Peter Brigham, who's going to take over the position from Marissa Tereski. Um, the two of them were presented to the student body, uh, I guess it was last week, two weeks ago. Um, and everyone's really excited about that. Um, we've been following pretty closely um, some of the decisions made by our senators in <clears throat> the ongoing debate about TARP and how it's going to affect our school system and the school board. And um, trying to come up with some new innovative ideas on how to cut some things from the budget um, that will need to be cut in the next year or two. So we'll keep working. We have an SAC meeting tomorrow morning also at 7 o'clock and um, at the next meeting we'll let you know what goes on at that meeting. Any questions for Andrew and Sarah? Thank you. Um, are there any members of the public here who would like to comment in, on non-agenda items? Okay, Dr. Efron. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. And I'm also trying to uh, communicate with everybody watching us on television. Um, <clears throat> And I'm picking up with what Andrew said. Um, it's been exciting to watch our two senators getting all this national attention and being the center of the compromises that are being worked out on the stimulus package. I know that they're both getting swamped with phone calls and emails from all over the country. But it's communication from us, their constituents, uh, that has the biggest impact. Um, 
I'm requesting for people to call or email Senator Collins and Senator Snow and ask them to compromise with this upcoming opportunity with the House over the monies for, for aid to states and aids to education. Talking specifically about Cape Elizabeth, why do I make this request? We were asked to cut from the, from, uh, from the state $421,000 this year. And with tremendous help from the town council, we were able to get by this year without reducing staff. The state is telling us to expect similar size cuts for the next two years. So for next year, we're looking at a state cut of somewhere between 420 to $470,000. And this represents an amount of money, this, this amount of money uh, is what supports, for instance, the entire science department at the high school. Um, these next two years, there's not going to be extra funds uh, that were found this year that bailed us out. So this, these cuts are going to represent something in the order of six plus uh, reductions in teachers and staff. <laughs> these reductions are going to lead to larger class sizes, reduced elective programs, reduced support programs for our children. And then we do it all over again the following year. Um, the stimulus package is designed to save jobs and create jobs. It's first purpose. Why not have the jobs that are being saved be these teachers and staff who provide services for our children? And so I make this request for us Mainers, the constituents of our two critical senators, to call them, email them, ask them to build back some of the monies uh, for aid to states and aid to education in this next opportunity with the House to once again improve the stimulus package. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Dr. Efron. Um, hey, recognition, the high school theater mu club musical. I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Mullen. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, thanks for having us back. <laughs> uh, we have our ducks in a row uh, this time. Our technology is all set. Mr. Will DeSena is here. Will DeSena, as a matter of fact, has made a, a nice video of, uh, a DVD actually, of Beauty and the Beast. And also I have some of the students here from uh, Beauty and the Beast. If you would stand up, please. All of you who are in Beauty and the Beast. Okay, good. Uh, why don't you come behind me? Because I think that the parents are probably watching to see that you actually will be seen uh, here. Uh, right. Um, well, uh, I guess we have maybe eight uh, people behind us. If we had the whole contingent of Beauty and the Beast, which was two months ago, before all of this fall to roll over the uh, budgets and so forth, it was a wonderful, happy time in November. The climate has changed, but we're going to take you back uh, to that time two months ago in just a second. But with these eight students here, if uh, we had all of the students here who were in Beauty and the Beast, we would fill this and have them standing up there because there were 88 people in Beauty and the Beast working on it and actually in uh, the show. We happen to have a little uh, a clip here. It's about 30 seconds. I've been given three minutes to do this. So we've got this plan very tightly. Okay, so if the light will go off, we actually have uh, Sarah Friedman up here as a member of the school board. And also <laughs> we have Casey Oakes here. And also singing behind is Kelsey Crow, who is here. Let's go back to Beauty and the Beast for a few seconds.
Patience is a virtue. From the, apart from the uh, 88 people who worked on the show, uh, including uh, students from Pond Cove, we had 3,000 seats uh, taken for uh, A Beauty and the Beast. Uh, there were eight performances of it. We turned people away. People from Cumberland County came. We had a wonderful contingent of senior citizens that we have been working with for a few years, elementary students. And we would like to now have a uh, statement uh, from one of the parents who had uh, a child in the show. Can we go there, Will? <laughs> So uh, we leave you uh, with the word community and thank you so much for support and to the whole community that has seen the high school as a center of the arts. Uh, we appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you. And next, um, the speech team, um, state competition results in the National Forensics League. And I know that there's overlap in those two organizations. And I know that Mr. Mullen helped out with that. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Lisa. Great. Thank um, you. Trish, thank you for having me here tonight. And thank you to the school board members for your support of the speech team. Uh, I have, I think, 15 members of our speech team here tonight. If you could stand up. I know there is overlap with theater, but, and maybe. Uh, Take a bow. <laughs> Congratulations. I have to say, these students do not get out of school early. 
there's no early dismissal uh, uh, to attend a meet. It is early Saturday morning departures, as early as 6 a.m. And I like to leave promptly, and so at 6.05, we are out of the driveway. Uh, so it's a long day, too. They often don't return home until about 9 at night. And yet, even knowing that, the team grew from maybe a half dozen at the first meeting to more than 40 by the end of the season, with uh, 30 attending uh, tournaments on a regular basis. In the final meet at the state competition, uh, we finished third overall in a sweepstakes competition out of 14 schools. Um, I think next year, if, uh, if the team uh, is sustained in the budget, we have chances of uh, in incorporating debate, perhaps, uh, and uh, in encouraging more students to attend. Uh, one of the events that we had was the qualifier for the National Forensic League, uh, the Catholic National Forensic League tournament last weekend. We had six students qualify for the national tournament. Uh, Marissa Tureski, uh, Hannah Towers, who is here tonight, Paige Pendarvis, uh, Brendan Stewart, and let's see, Ian McInerney and uh, Liz Briggs. And I don't know if I'm leaving anyone out there, uh, but uh, six students, and that'll be in Albany um, Memorial Day weekend. I'm very proud of their accomplishments. Not only do they compete individually, they came together as a team, mutually supportive, um, serious about their own work and the caliber of their work, spending endless hours after school or before school or during lunch to practice with uh, either Mr. Mullen or myself. Uh, and they took it seriously, but they had fun at the meets. And I saw many friendships blossom as a result. And that was an unintended uh, result that uh, I think speaks to their character. Uh, so it was a pleasure to work with them. I also want to mention the volunteer hours that were put in by um, people to help me uh, manage such a large team. We had Mr. Mullen, who I'm estimating put in between 400 or 500 hours uh, somehow. He's uh, technically a part-time member of the staff, and yet he filled up the rest of the day by, uh, with tutorials with individual students. Uh, Brendan with storytelling, um, Tom with the dishwasher, comedy, uh, humorous interpretation, Hannah with her poetry, um, um, many of you uh, benefited from his instruction. Cindy Stephanus, uh, who's the mother of a uh, 2006 or 7 graduate, Adam Stephanus, helped out uh, at, at weekly meetings. Uh, she probably put in about uh, 100 hours herself. My husband Jack helped out with the extemporaneous category, uh, coming to Tuesday night meetings and working with the special extemp category. Uh, I had Graduates, including Adam Stephanus and Astrea Campbell-Cobb, donate time during their winter break. I had David Campbell, uh, father of Astrea, uh, also volunteer time. So uh, I think it, it speaks to um, adults' investment in, in kids that these people were willing to do that. So thank you very much, and I congratulate the team once again. Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment to thank all of you for what you've done. I have spent weeks and months doing this budget, and it is a very difficult thing to do, as my administrators would say, but it is the programs that you put on, along with many other people in Cape Elizabeth, that tells us what a very, very valuable school system this is and what we do for young people. Uh, I went to the play. It was wonderful, including all of the kids that were there from Pond Cove, along with all the high school kids and what they did. I went to the presentation the other night at, uh, for the uh, speech, and I have to tell you, I don't often get near tears, but I came very close that night. I was just blown away with the speaking ability uh, of, and the process that they went through. So from a personal point of view as superintendent of schools, I want to thank you so much. You set a goal for many of us in the work you did, and I, it's, it's really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Um, um, last item under recognition is the middle school career fair and the volunteers and I think our, student, our middle school representative Piper mentioned that. I think I just wanted to comment and thank Gail Spader, the volunteer coordinator um, who organizes the career fair. She's done a great job this year. She's done in many years past. It's a wonderful opportunity for the kids and I think without Gail's 
um, organizational skills at the event wouldn't go off as well as it, do, it did. And also, thank you to all of those community members who participated um, in sharing their avocation with the students and to the MSPA for the, providing the hostessing and the refreshments. I think Steve is on the list. You want to give and Steve, did you want to add some comments as the middle school principal? Good evening. Um, Gail Schmader. Uh, orchestrates a marvelous um, career fair, and she's supported by the guidance department at the middle school, Kate Tebow, Gretchen Earl, and Kim Sturgeon, and they, they work uh, uh, very hard on this. And then the staff is, is extremely cooperative. And just to give you an example of the kinds of career opportunities and the involvement of people, there were 22 different careers that were represented at this fair. And they range from uh, Mr. Allen coming in as a pilot for Continental Airlines to Audrey Castro from a uh, small business owner of the Buttered Biscuit, Mark Dorval, a uh, law enforcement agent, um, Glenn Jordan, sports writer, Peter Carey, lawyer, uh, Steve Price, teacher. So there's, there's quite, a, quite a wide offering of opportunities for students as well. And then the next day that's followed up with our uh, job shadow experiences and students are working on their um, bridges component of the of the career prep unit that's an online piece that they can do to try to ferret out what some of the areas are that they may want to continue to consider exploring as they enter into high school okay. questions for Steve Steve hold on sure. no, not, not a question I just want to say that I'm personally very um, pleased to hear that we had a teacher representative as part of the, the fair because it's truly an honorable profession and its importance to our society and our communities can't be overstated. Um, and so I hope that that's something that continues moving forward. We typically had a, a retired teacher, Bruce Lynn, for instance, in the past has, right. past has come in to do this. And this year we didn't have a, a, a representative from a, a retired community member, so Steve Price said, sure, I'll tire that one. Great. Thanks. And I should mention, too, that Steve was the writer who presented that day. Our writer didn't, wasn't there, and Steve has helped author a book, so he was the one who presented on writing. So. Yeah, impromptu stand-in. <laughs> you know about those. <laughs> yes, I do. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Do you want to give that Yeah, I was just going to say, before we start the communications, if you don't mind, again, thank you to the students for coming and sharing um, your talents with us. If you want to take a quick break, exit, you're welcome to stay and attend, but if you'd like to leave, you may do so. And thank you very much. Thank you again for coming and for your hard work. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that seems a little more like our another budget. I know. Should we? Okay. Moving on. Um, Alan, communication retirement of a pond co teacher. Yes. Um, it's always interesting. We get to this time of year, and people begin to think about uh, next steps in their future. And Ogden uh, Williams, who has been at Pond Hall for many years, uh, took this past year off. You gave him permission to do that because he be had become very interested in book sales and uh, really expanded his company. So I have been in contact with each person who had the year off just to find out if they were coming back or not. And the other day I received a letter from Ogden I'm not going to read it all, but I would like to just read a few words in it because I think he wrote a tremendous letter to you, to the board members and to the community. In it he says, when I began teaching in the Cape Elizabeth schools 20 years ago, I quickly and happily saw this was a community that valued education highly, where parents were involved, teachers highly motivated, and the children bright, lively, and memorable. And so it is. Our town still boasts fine schools, teachers, administrators, parents, and wonderful children. My years have been challenging, satisfying, and unforgettable, and fun. And then he goes on to say what he did this year, and then he goes, the next paragraph, he says, I realize these are perilous times to be jumping out of the security net and into the fire. But life is short, and if you don't follow your dream, where are you going? 
Following the passion led me to Cape Elizabeth schools in the first place. Now it leads me elsewhere. And so Ogden uh, really spoke to how he felt about his years here in Cape Elizabeth. That was a really nice letter and really touched the heart of what this is all about. And I think, again, when you talk about authors, uh, I happen to have in my office, I think it's four books that he published with his students over the period of 20 years about Maine history, and uh, which are, are really nice as well. So he will be sorely missed. Uh, thank you, Alan. Legislative update. From a legislative point of view, uh, there are so many things to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. I think Dr. Efron made the point very clearly. If you've been watching national news, you've seen our two senators very active in the work that has been done by the Senate. I noticed today the Senate did pass it uh, with a 61 to 37 vote. Now it needs to go back to uh, the House of Representatives to be reviewed and hopefully to come to a middle ground. Uh, I, I am nervous because I haven't heard exactly how their decisions affected the possible money to schools. And so I'll be very interested, and I have called both offices today. I guess I'm one of thousands who did, but I at least did get a message through hoping that they'll get that to us soon. In, in Augusta, they are moving ahead on uh, the legislation for next year as far as schools are concerned. My most recent understanding is that they will be doing using the formula to figure out what our state aid to education is, but it still will not be any higher than it is this year. And as Dr. Efron said, we will probably be losing again next year and probably the year after as well, that $421,000 curtailment as a minimum. And so those are pieces to the puzzle we'll be watching. And I'm not sure, for those of you who are on the uh, board who have been uh, in contact about legislature, if you have anything newer than I do at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Um, Cumberland County Superintendents Association meeting. Are we sharing this one? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you, I'll let oh. you take it. Okay. Right. You and Mary. Um, <laughs> Friday, January 30th, um, Mary and myself, ha at Alan's invitation, had the opportunity to attend the Cumberland County Superintendents Association meeting. Um, and it was, it was great. It was a really informative meeting. Commissioner Gendron was there, and I guess this actually highlights how quickly legislation changes. Because at that meeting, she was speaking very enthusiastically about the stimulus package, which was, would, they were anticipating was coming to Maine. And subsequent to that, I think that stimulus package has been cut um, to some extent. She spoke about um, the different components of the stimulus package, um, that it would be two years only. There was some discussion about how that would play out in community finances. Um, we spent a little bit of time talking about unfunded mandates, which has been a conversation that's been going on. Um, the MSMA has developed a list and shared it with the Department of Education, um, and there's other information still being solicited. Interestingly enough, one comment she made was that she felt that um, there weren't all that many unfunded mandates because all of the mandates were in some way, shape, or form included in the formula. However, there were conversations and comments that were made that um, in the formula, that's sort of a base level of funding and not necessarily full funded mandates. Um, let's see, oh, they, she did sort of strike a um, collaborative tone so that they were looking at some of the new graduation requirements and overall looking at what mandates and legislation might pose roadblocks to innovation and improvements in the schools. After her presentation, um, there was a great opportunity to sit and talk with um, community leaders, school dis district representatives, and legislatures to talk about communication with the DOE, how we could improve that, how we could work um, together, how the consolidation legislation has um, sort of settled out. And um, it was just a, it was a great dialogue, and I'm pleased that we could participate. Thank you to Alan, who, as the president of the Cumberland County Superintendents Association, organize the meeting, and we're hoping that there'll be other opportunities to do that. Um, before I turn it over to Alan, Mary, would you like to add if you were there as well? Um, I think I would just add the point about um, we have been in contact with our legislators asking them to um, please be wary of any um, unfunded mandates, any additional unfunded mandates being slipped in into legislation. Um, 
it, one of the things that we asked was that um, there be no new f unfunded mandates during the economic crisis. So we'll see where that, where that goes as part of the exploration of unfunded mandates. Mm. Do you have any other comments? Alex? I think the only thing I would say is, is again, uh, Senator Bliss was with us, and mm. he said that he would work with his group as far as taking a look at all of the mandates, all of the laws that are coming out to make sure there are no unfunded mandates and would be in contact with us. We also had the chair of the Education Committee for the Legislature there. And he has invited us back. And so in April, uh, I will be setting another date to meet with the legislators and the Cumberland County superintendents. Also, we had town managers or city managers there and also uh, heads of town councils, city councils, et cetera. And so we'll plan on doing this again. Uh, and in the meantime, many of you know that uh, Jim Rowe has set up a meeting so that we'll be meeting with the legislators from Scarborough, South Portland, and uh, Cape Elizabeth, I think it's the end of February. February 25th. February 25th, so that we are also doing that. So I think we are really working hard at keeping close tabs on them to help them out in the process at the legislature. Right. Thank you. Any questions or anyone else? Okay, the board workshop on technology. Um, one of the things we're gonna try to do because our, at this point, our workshops are public meetings in the library but not televised to sort of share a little bit about what happens at those workshops. And two weeks ago at our um, workshop, we, Gary Lenoy and members of his staff provided an overview of technology in the schools, how it's being used, what the trends are in the technology, technological environment. The content of, the pre of his presentation, which was great and very informative, is now available as a link on the school website. It's under the What's New heading. So I would encourage people, um, anyone, members of the public, who are interested to go in and check out um, his presentation. There's a lot of information, a lot of data in there, and it really shows how, um, you know, the, the, the importance of technology in schools. And I'd open it up to anyone else who wants to comment or share any thoughts on that workshop. No, it was fascinating. I mean, he really is doing a great job. And I spent the next morning, I think, happened to be a snow day. And I spent um, about an hour and a half just going through um, the links that he gave us. They're very user friendly and, you know, can sort of bring you up to if you're like me, you know, it's hard to keep up with the technology. It's changing all the time and it, it, it'll um, bring you up to speed pretty quickly. He did a great job laying things out. So, I mean, it would be a great resource for anyone who wants to learn more about technology and what's available. Thank and the only other way I would link it is you're going to talk about it later on tonight are the goals of the board. Mm -hmm. And one of the major goals of the board is technology. So I think it's a very important piece to put in there at the same time. I will also mention, though, that I have done some checking. I do have somebody who will film our workshops on the budget on the 12th and then on the 24th and the 26th. So those will be filmed. We're going to try that and see how well we're going to be using a hand camera. So it will not be the same as here. But we're at least going to try to do that so it is available on uh, local TV. Oh, so Thank it you. will be available on TV. And will it also be made available on a website? I think that's what we're going to try to do. I'm not a real expert on this, so Gary is the one who's going to oversee it to make sure it's available in as many places as possible. Um, just as a wrap up on that, I want to thank Gary and his staff members who did the workshop and for the um, amazing work they do. It's a very small crew of people. It's a really important function in the school and sort of one of those back office, so to speak, functions, although they work really hard to integrate it into our classrooms. Um, report on the joint budget forums. Kathy? Um, the school board and the town council got together for a second joint meeting uh, on January 5th. We did this at the um, high school cafeteria, along with all the uh, machines. <laughs> and um, I think it was fairly successful. We got together to discuss uh, the public comment we had heard at our first uh, joint meeting and to discuss some of the, acknowledge the different items and see uh, which ones, you know, so that we could understand, town council could understand school board issues and school board could understand town council issues. So I think that that was fairly successful. Um, do you want me to talk about the, the budget, upcoming budget meetings when they are? Mm -hmm. so the, um, 
The, the first budget meeting of the school board is this Thursday, um, February 12th. It will be at 7 p.m. at the high school library. The next school board uh, workshop, and oh, I should say they're also public hearings, so the public is welcome to come and speak. Um, the next school board workshop and public hearing is on Tuesday, February 24th, again at the uh, Cape Elizabeth High School Library at 7 p.m. And there is a tentative meeting, depending on whether we need it, which is another workshop and public hearing on Thursday, February 26th at 7 p.m., again at the high school library. So all are invited to uh, attend. The public is welcome to speak. And we, as Alan said, we're working on having those um, videoed and available. Um, I think we talked about maybe being able to podcast them through Gary's department, but we don't have an exact confirmation on that, but we're working on it. Um, this Thursday, uh, the presenters to the school board will be the three principals and Gary Lenoy on technology. So they will be presenting um, to the school board their uh, different uh, uh, um, cost centers and um, available for questions and answers. Missed anything? No? Okay. Any questions, colleagues? Um, I'm wondering if it would be okay with the board if we moved um, up the new business consideration to authorize the cable as baseball and softball boosters to sub banners for Holman Field since we have three members of the boosters mm -hmm. sitting in the back row. That's okay. So that they can. Mm -hmm. I know you want to stay and listen, but. <laughs> um, do you want to? Do you want me to? Uh, I will go. This went to the Finance Committee last week, week before last. Uh, this was a continuation of an agreement that we had. I think it was done in 07, and, but there were some problems as far as getting some of the materials in place. So it was 07, 08, I think it was. Let me, I'm just going to touch the base on the letter. So what I do have here is a letter to give them three-year opportunity to continue to do the signs with the understanding that there are limitations on them as far as uh, religious, food, <coughs> smoking, alcohol, and sexual products. So it's basically the same agreement. Correct. So you want to talk about that briefly? And uh... Yes, this has become a very, um, very successful fundraising support venue um, for the last year for the baseball boosters, looking to expand it to cover both um, Holman and Capano Field, include the softball team. With, uh, within the ordinance of the sign, within the agreement with the sign ordinance, and uh, Superintendent Hawkins and I had reviewed each banner before it went, got put up for its uh, d design, content, and message, and I think it was a very successful program. It kind of um, gave a certain professional feel to the baseball um, diamond because it kind of you know, incorporated some of the Hadlock field and the signage that you see at different baseball fields around. Uh, major League and Minor League Parks. So it was kind of a neat uh, venue and gave an opportunity for folks to support our programs. Does anyone have any questions for Roger? Um, is anyone interested in making a motion on this? I move that we uh, approve the Cape Elizabeth Baseball and Softball Boosters ability to sell banners at both Holman Field and Capon Field. Second, Mary. Um, comments, questions? I'm just kind of curious, what has, <clears throat> what have you been able to do with some of the funds that you've raised? Um, we support the, uh, the addition of a fourth coach with this um, program. Um, we have a varsity assistant coach. Uh, we also refurbished an old pitching machine last year um, that we didn't have to pay for. We, we had, a, it was sitting around, we spent about $900 to refurbish a $2,300 pitching machine that we couldn't have afforded to um, buy otherwise. So it's mostly, um, either staff uh, coaching or um, capital improvements to the field or support of the program directly. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you um, on behalf of the school district for the base, to the baseball and softball boosters for all you do to support our programs. We really couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much. Thank you for your support. And I do have the letters here. Okay. Ken, I think, was the one who was going to sign them. I've got four of them. If you would sign those, then I'll get the other signatures and get a copy to you. Yep. Uh, just so we have taken care of that piece and it doesn't get laid by the way. Mm -hmm. You got one there? Okay. 
Okay, and Alan, I'm going to go back to you now. Thank you for letting, allowing us to change the agenda. I'm going to go back to you, Alan. On under commu communication, the final item is the a budget overview. Okay, I've taken my watch off. I just want you all to notice this, because I've told all the administrators when they present, they can present for no more than seven minutes. And so, if I'm caught asking them to do that, I'm going to keep mine to seven minutes too, uh, before there are questions. Okay? Uh, you all have received the initial copy of the superintendent's. Uh, potential budget at a 2% increase uh, that came to you on Friday. Uh, I will say, first of all, to all of you, this has taken an enormous amount of time, an enormous amount of soul searching, many discussions uh, as we've gone through this process. Uh, we are very clear that this was the target that you gave us, and I appreciate the work that you did to give us that target because we needed some format to work towards. I'm not sure that it'll be the last target that we'll, play, we'll work with, but at least it gives you a picture of that. I'm gonna speak just briefly about my forward letter in it, and then uh, as you read through the budget, I'm sure you will figure out the questions that you want to ask and ask each one of the administrators as well. Uh, what we did was, I looked very closely at our mission and belief statements, because I think that is a key to everything we do. And the key to me is that Education is for the young people in Cape Elizabeth to ensure they get the education they need to go out into the world and be successful. So I really focused my statements around that. Uh, I then went through it and have talked with the administrators about what you do and how we do the decision-making process. Uh, I thank uh, Jeff Shad because Jeff really put it in very succinct words how we make those decisions. And so with Jeff's permission, I used his quote in my uh, write-up and also in his. But he did talk about the fact that there are really five factors that we look at as far as educating young people and what we need to know as we work our way through the process. The other piece that I looked at was the work that you did as a board just recently to set goals. Because I think those goals are extremely important as we look at this. One of your goals is around technology. And so we need to look at that very carefully as we move along. I've talked in this uh, document about the goals of the budget itself, which are really focused on curriculum instruction and assessment, which is based <coughs> on everything we do. It also talks about uh, the work that the CIA is doing in order to make that work. We talked about teacher leadership. Uh, we then also looked at those people who serve as teacher leaders. I, am, I have not bent from that piece. I feel they are extremely important. And so I have continued to put information in here, both about those teacher leaders we have and those teacher leaders we don't have. Uh, I've also looked at in here the programs that go with those. For instance, the Achievement Center, uh, the Math Lab at Long Cove, et cetera, and what roles those play. You will find that each of the principals also writes about them in their section of the budget. Another very important piece I talked about was data gathering because we've talked for so many years about data gathering. We are now at a place where we can begin to do that and interpret it both from the perspective of the individual child, the class, the grade level, the school, and the system. And so we are, we are building that. As you know, we applied for two grants, did not get them, so we decided we were not defeated, and so we have done it by people who work in the system. And I'm extremely pleased in how that's going. I also talked about uh, the uncertainties of revenues, and that probably is the part that has driven me crazy as we've done this, because there are many pieces I don't know. Some of those uncertainties are undesignated funds. Uh, usually we have had $250,000 to put back into the budget as revenue for the next year. We don't have that this year, and we know we don't. So we are going to be short as far as that money goes. It looks like we'll probably have around 100000 could be up to 150000 you heard earlier, general purpose aid to education, we don't know what that's going to look like. We know we're going to take cuts, but we are certain that that is not going to be the same amount of money we've had in the past. Uh, we're looking at miscellaneous revenue uh, that have, have become a problem uh, as programs have disappeared. And so that is also one that we worry about. And we look at the subsidy from the federal government and what that's going to be. Uh, we know as far as expenditures go, we have some very specific expenditures we have to be concerned about. First and foremost is salaries and fringe benefits of all employees. That's from my office right straight down through and what that costs us. Uh, also have to be very clear, 
on the expenditures for fuel oil. We uh, fortunately have signed a contract, so the fuel oil 0910 is $1.94 a gallon, uh, which is different than the $4 and something we paid this year. So that has, made, that has shown us a savings. Uh, we know that the bond issue has some money available, and I've applied for some $128,000, and that will be a decision of the town council as far as what happens. So in conclusion, what I, what I would say to you is, we have looked at so many different possibilities. We have listened to so many different people. We have heard so many pieces to the puzzle. As you, as board members, go through it, you're going to find things you agree with us on, and you're going to find things you disagree with us on. We will have those discussions. As your questions are coming in, uh, I got one set today. I have sent them on to the DLT so that they will be answering them based on their school uh, and where we're going from there. But the baseline is this. When you are talking about a change in your funding that is much lower and therefore affects staff, it is a major issue that you need to deal with. Uh, I think we have worked very carefully to try to readjust funds so that the major components that I was really worried about have not been as bad as I thought, but that doesn't make them good. It just means we haven't had as many positions as I was afraid we would have to do, but we have had to look at a lot of different scenarios. We have lost. If there are other budget cuts, if we move slower, lower, those will cause even greater losses. Uh, but I think the important message is that I feel strongly that the administrative team have spent innumerable hours trying to make the best decisions possible in the time that they have had. I also feel strongly that next year we need to do this a little differently and that we really start as soon as this budget passes for 0910, we start building 10 and 11, not with these documents, but the discussions about what does our curriculum look like and how are we linking them up together to, uh, to draw a picture. So that is my quick overview of where we are at this point. I ask each of you as board members, I ask every member of the community who is interested, please take the time to read the entire budget. It's 147 pages long, I know that right up front, but I have administrators who have spent long hours putting together their picture of what their budget looks like. And I think it's important for each of you to see that and hear it and understand it as we move forward. And so with that, uh, I, the budget is now in your hands. At, well, the next uh, two weeks with a vacation in between, you'll be taking a very serious look at some of these things. A lot of questions will come to the forefront and we will be as prepared as possible to answer them. Questions that come in early are very helpful because they let us know what you're going to be asking so we can answer them appropriately at the time. So I am now at seven minutes. I thank all of you and uh, I look forward to the next steps we take in this process. Thank you. Any questions or comments before we move on? Thank you, Alan, and all of the other DLT members who spent so much time putting that budget together. Um, okay, new business. We took care of Capano. Consideration and action to approve middle school athletic fee positions. Bear with me for just a minute while I look for I think there's only one. I think there is. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate that. The only one you have is uh, for Leslie Thor Thorup. Now, there's, Scott has written a very clear, I hope clear enough explanation for what's going on. We currently have 69 students at the middle school who signed up for swimming. <coughs> Obviously, if you've signed up that number of students for swimming, you also need to be sure you're doing the coaching the way you're supposed to. I was very clear with both uh, Jeff Thorup and Scott, we do not have money for any extra coaches. So they both went back through the budget. They found a position that for this coming year was not going to need to be filled on the, and I'm looking for which sport it was. Is it called Spring, Spring B? B. Okay. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Spring B uh, baseball. So they're not going to need that. So in that process, they opted to move Leslie Thorup, who could do the swimming piece, into as a third coach for swimming.
in order to ensure safety and good instruction. This is a one-year move only. It's a one-year move just to meet the numbers and to be sure we have coverage. Uh, we were also able to work out a uh, extra lifeguard to be sure we have lifeguard coverage as well. So Leslie will be the third coach. She'll be doing 97.2 hours. Uh, rate is uh, uh, $1,263.60. It is a new position from the perspective of it's a one-year position in that place. So we have the coaches we need. And so she is a new hire for that one position. So you have approved two coaches, and this is the third one for that position. May I make a comment? I just want to thank you all for considering this scene as I went to the meeting where all the kids showed up, and I very cautiously raised my hand to volunteer to help coach because when I saw there were 69 kids and one coach, I realized the impossibility of that actually happening safely and what the kids would get out of it. So I'm still willing to help out, <laughs> but, um, we'll but it's gonna make, make a big difference and it's much more realistic and I love all of the enthusiasm and excitement um, around it. So this is a great solution. So Karen, would you like to move? <laughs> would I like to make the motion? Make the motion. I would like to make the motion that we approve the superintendent's um, recommendation for the middle school athletic fee position for a swim coach for the girls. Second. Second. Linda, any questions or comments? I, I just have a question about not needing the spring yeah, baseball me too. coach. There must be uh, um, more than one, I'm assuming, yeah. that they can afford to come I have the same there. question. She's been involved with the discussion, so. I can only res <clears throat> excuse me, respond to what I heard. And that is that um, the anticipation is that last year at the spring sports season, they did not have enough for the third team. They do not anticipate enough again this year. Um, if they do get a greater number of kids than they anticipate, it's easier to um, take a few extra kids on a baseball team and be able to rotate them in than it is to try to um, make it an unsafe situation in a pool with extra swim kids of 69. So at this time, they're playing their odds and believing that they will be okay with it as it is. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Yep. So I, I, even even, <clears throat> I have a, a question because I'm confused. <laughs> um, this is middle school. So middle school is not paid to play. It's not running through community services. It is. So it, it is. So why we, we, pay, the we, we pay, pay the coaches? coaches. And we would need and to approve them anyway. Yes. I, I, we would approve correct. them, no. right, but I was more concerned. Right. That's right. I remember that. Thank you. Anybody else for a question or a comment before you come up? OK, all those in favor of the motion on the table? Thank you. Um, consideration to approve a leave of absence for Pond Coast staff member Holly Forsyth for the 2009-2010 school year. And again, you have a letter in your uh, packet, uh, dated January 23rd, 2009. Uh, she's writing to request a leave of absence. She's hoping that it will grant her request to stay home and care for her two children. Jack was three years old and a new baby, which is expected in May. My family and I appreciate you taking the time to consider this request. I plan to return to teaching and follow the following year, 2010 to 2011. Because several times you've asked the question about how are we going to cover this person, uh, if you have been watching the, the Pond Cove teacher population, et cetera, and how it looks, uh, we had three teachers out this year who are on extended leave. Ogden is not coming back, but two teachers are. When those two teachers come back, we are rotating people around. So I think, I look at Tom, but I think this uh, man manages to keep people who are already in, the building <coughs> in positions, uh, possibly changing grade levels, but keeping people in the building at that point in time. Thank you, Alan. Um, anyone want to make a motion? Oh, I said that. I have to accept um, Holly Forsyth's um, a letter of request for a leave of absence. Thank you, Mary. Any second? Okay. I'll second. Kathy? Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Seven, zero. I just was going to say that um, we. Oh, my, sorry. My, my children benefited from her teaching. She's wonderful, and I wish her all the best. Yes, absolutely. Ditto. 
Sorry, Rebecca. You're too I see you. I'm sorry. <laughs> too. She's a great teacher. Um, consideration to approve a change to part time status for Concord <clears throat> staff member Morgan Burns for the 2009 2010 school year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a letter which just came today. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Uh, what has happened is Dominic has been working with Morgan and also with Carly Main, who are, uh, Carly is expecting. Morgan has already had her baby. What they had requested was to do a job share, doing two and a half uh, days each in that process. Uh, Dominic has spoken to him, and I'm sure he'd be glad to speak to it also. But he has spoken to them and feels very comfortable with that process, with the understanding that we have hired somebody this year for Morgan's place, who has done well. Uh, I think we would probably intend on bringing that person back, although we do need to open that up so that that process is in place. So what I have is, you have the letter from Morgan Burns. I am going to send down to you now uh, the letter from Harley Lee. And so what each of them are asking is that for the school year 2009-2010, they return at two and a half days each uh, to, uh, in order to provide the programs that are necessary. And that will be at the middle school. Is that right? And you have the person in the place at Pond Cove because Morgan has already been out. And I don't know if you have specific questions. I know Dom would be happy to answer those. Are these, it's going to be a job share. They're existing positions now, so they're not positions. <clears throat> Correct. There's only, the, the, what's going to happen is Morgan's position at Pond Cove, <coughs> the new person, Dave, took that position over. So there's one position in life skills um, at, at the middle school. And what's going to happen is either going to be a three-day, two-day split um, with one I, I know one of the one of the ladies will not take a benefit package and one will. So really there's no cost and actually I think Pauline is an actual savings, so the way this will work out. And we do want to retain Morgan, so she is amazing, so it'd be great to keep her on staff. I guess I just wonder about the, the continuity of care that they'll that they'll offer. I mean it It'll be fine to split the job. You feel comfortable splitting the job? Yeah, what, it's very... Um, what are the responsibilities if you don't... Yeah, and I think when we do a tour, I think that will, you yeah. can see some of this. Um, in this. We call it the suite, and the instruction support suite at the middle school, they really work together. Resource rooms are next door to the FLS room, as well as the choices room. Um, the choices consultant works with... They, they, they all work together, so they kind of build, and the ed techs that we have in those rooms are very, very capable. I know there were some questions about ed techs today, um, and what threes do and twos do and so forth, and threes are incredibly valuable to these self-contained programs. Okay. So, and, and I think when, I, when we do a tour, I think that will be helpful, so. Right. I, I hope I answered your question. Yeah. I think I did. I just have a question about the benefits for part-time employees. Is that pretty customary that we... 50%. 50%, okay. Uh, the only other thing I would like to say with this also is, as we begin to look at positions as we have done year after year after year, one of the things I am extremely careful of is to be sure they are certified teachers. I do not put anyone in a position that, where they are not certified. And uh, I have another instance that's not Dom's issue, but another teacher who's going to be out I got a name the other day, that person did not have the certification that was necessary in order to do that. <coughs> and so I do make very sure that I have all the documentation to ensure they are certified teachers and therefore can meet both the HQT expectations as well as the certification expectations. Any other questions, introductory, inform informational questions? Okay, is there a motion to approve um, a change to part-time status for Pond Coast staff members. Is it Morgan and Carly and that Carly. should be? And Carly. Yeah, so we should add Carly. Should from Morgan Burns and Carly Maine Main for the 2009-2010 school year. Uh, so moved. Thank you, Karen. Second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? Hmm. Seven zero. Thank you. 
Rebecca, consideration of the pol following policies for second reading. Uh, yes, we're presented this evening with four policies for second reading, EFI, Food Service Records and Reports, EI, Insurance Management, JHCA, Use of Unscheduled Class Time for High School Seniors, JLCCA, AIDS, HIV Attendance. Um, these all uh, went through first reading and um, back to the policy committee without any comments or suggestions from the board or the public. So at this point, I'd like to move that the board approve these policies, approve these policies. Second. Thank you, Rebecca. Any second? Second, Kathy. Any comments or questions for Rebecca? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, Rebecca, and everyone else. Okay. okay, consideration of the following policies for first reading. All right, we have um, four, actually three policies and one um, guidelines. Uh, so, First is EF Food Services Management. Second one is EFE Competitive Food Sales. Third one is KFA Smoking on School Property. This is um, actually recommended for deletion um, because it's, this is covered in our substance abuse um, policy. And um, I think I'll just step first address these three as there are policies. Um, the first one, Food Services Management, was um, changed, uh, has a minor change just to reflect um, some clarification on the communication of menus to families. Uh, the second one, EFE, um, had actually been discussed a while ago by the committee and um, there are no changes that it's recommending. The policy committee is not recommending any changes to the competitive food sales, um, but we do need to reflect that it was under review and to have the board agree that no changes are required at this moment. So that is up for first reading. Um, and I don't think we need to vote on anything. So then I will move on to KFR. Uh, this is um, something that Janet had brought to us. Um, our the extracurricular committee actually perhaps. And, and a combination of yeah, both. Yeah. Sorry. I can, address, I can speak to it if you'd like. If you one. would, please. Okay. KF, KFR is actually guidelines for the use of uh, facilities and guidelines. Specifically, um, it's a policy that we'll probably continue to work on on an annual basis. The major change that, we're, that, we, that took place on the guideline this time had to do with the fee structure. Um, Janet took a look at our neighboring towns and the fee structures they've set up specifically for their turf fields. So we have made some adjustments to the field, the Hannaford field fees. So that's the only change in policy. And or if, guideline, excuse me, guideline. Um, and if I may, I, I, we actually didn't discuss at the policy committee, and I apologize for that. But um, I would like to suggest that perhaps we treat this as a first reading, because this is really the first public notification that the fees are going to be changed at the turf field um, just to allow citizens who would like to, co to contact us about these proposed changes, um, given the time to do so. Is that going to be a big problem for you, Janet, in terms of um, any sort of planning that you need to do? What's that timeline look like? It would be uh, March 10th would be the vote they'd take on. Well, we, would, we actually don't need to take a no, vote. No, it's right. a guideline. It's so, a guideline. so it's perhaps, a perhaps what we can say is, unless you know, if if citizens feel strongly about this, to please contact the board. And we can board, always revisit. Please contact the board, um, and please do so within the next week or so, so that we can address any issues that might arise, perhaps in our next policy committee meeting. Um, June twenty-four. June. February. Yeah, June. February June. 24th. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going right we're we're Wishful summer. thinking. <laughs> I like being on that committee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it would be February. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, February 24th, I believe is the proposed date. And that's actually not confirmed, but it is our proposed date. So if that's okay with the board, that's how I'd like to recommend we proceed. Okay, any questions or comments for Rebecca? Thank you, Rebecca. 
Um, consideration to approve the superintendent's recommendation for administrator contract renewals for 2009-2010. Alan? Yes. Uh, you have a sheet in your packet. Uh, as you know, it is my responsibility to evaluate the administrators in the system. Uh, as you look at this list, you will see two people missing off that list. Uh, one is Jeff Dora, and the other one is Janet. And the reason they're missing is because they're probationary, and I have just finished their half year evaluation, their written evaluation. For Steve Conley, Tom Reismeyer, Jeff Shedd, Paul Nina Portria, Dominic Patsy, and Gary Lenoy. Uh, as you know, I, I work with them quite closely. I think they would all agree with that. And so uh, I continue to gather data, et cetera, and to write evaluations often. I feel very strongly they are, they are putting 195% uh, into their jobs. The one issue that we have worked with as an administrative team that was probably the biggest issue was looking at evaluations. And so this year we have realigned evaluations. They are in the process of doing them right now. And I will be reviewing those uh, as we come closer to the rehiring of teachers. But that was the one big issue we had to take a look at. Uh, I feel very strongly that for Steve, Tom, Jeff, Pauline, Dominic, and Gary, that I would not, I will re-nominate them as uh, principals and district-wide leadership. The reason I have left out the two assistant principals is not because I dislike them. The reason I have left them out is, is because they are evaluated by their principals. And I have talked with both principals, and they feel in their evaluations of the two assistant principals that these people have fulfilled all of their requirements and therefore would also be uh, renominated for their, their position. Uh, as you know, we are in the process of negotiating contract with administrators, so there may be some adjustments that need to be made, but since I am under state law of uh, letting them know by March 1st, uh, what their situation is that I felt it needed to come to you tonight. Their 0910 written, final written evaluation, <coughs> with the exception of Gary, who I've already done, uh, will be finished uh, in, before the school year closes, because one major issue to that is their evaluation piece. But they have been sending me evaluations as they complete them, so that I can see what they're doing and how they're moving ahead on those. Uh, again, an issue that came up when we did teacher evaluation, teacher contracts this year, and making sure we have good, clear, concise evaluations of each of the teachers that they will see. Um, Alan, may I, sh may I ask you a question on yes. the evaluation process? What does that look like with the administrators? Do you sit down and meet with them formally? I mean, how can you share with us? There are several steps to the process. Is that number one, uh, we work on goals for the, for the coming year. Number two is that we, I meet with them on a fairly regular process, looking at the different pieces they do. Their document has, I think it's 10, I don't have one with me, I think there are 10 specific areas I look at, which are management, evaluation, all of those pieces that they're supposed to do. I have uh, discussed them with them. Uh, I usually do a written format for them to give me feedback, and then I do a written format and share those with them and go over the content of it at that point. And does staff give feedback? I mean, is it as far as who they're, that, no. okay? I was just curious, like who's included in the evaluation process? Is it really your sort of seeing it what is, they're working on? It is me overseeing the the administrators who are working in doing these, this process. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendations for administrator contract renewals for 2009-2010 as presented? So moved. Thank you, Kathy. A second? Second. Linda? Anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, okay, consideration to approve the school board goals for 2009 as presented. Um, we, if you recall, we met in January. We've drafted this list. We presented it um, and talked a little bit with the DLT at the workshop, and um, we have it here tonight for approval, um, for your approval. So can I have a motion to approve the school board goals for 2009 as presented? You're making this awfully easy for us. So moved. Thank you. Um, second? I'll second. Mary? Any questions or comments? I'm wondering if you sh they're not 
that long. I'm wondering if you should read them so that they're on record. That's a good suggestion. I was going to say after this, as we've done in the past, these will go on the school website mm -hmm. um, with a sort of brief introduction. But I will read them. Thank you, Kathy. Um, by the end of 2009, the school board will have reviewed and updated the communication plan for the school board's various stakeholders, developed and documented an effective and timely board and superintendent evaluation process, developed an annual plan for building a respectful working relationship with the town council and an understanding of each other's roles, further developed the work of the technology report to better in integrate existing technology with curriculum and staff development and to achieve greater administrative efficiencies set a timeline for completion of the curriculum development plan with periodic check-ins, develop a plan to keep the progress on goals in front of the board regularly, and develop with the district leadership team a plan for data-based priority setting and decision-making, and review and update as necessary its committee structure um, as soon as possible after the January goal setting meeting, which we have done. So um, we're making progress already. Um, <coughs> so once um, it, once these are approved, they will be placed on the school website, um, and perhaps as we go through the year, we can, up, we can document any progress we make towards those goals. Um, I think there's a motion on the table. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, consideration to approve the school board committee structure and membership as presented. Um, we had spent a lot of time discussing um, the structure, our committees, what they are, what their purposes are, um, and then a final assignment of committee membership. So, I'm wondering if we should do this in two parts. The committee structure and the membership, or all together? All together? All right, um, can I have a motion to approve the school board committee structure and membership as presented so moved. Thank you, Rebecca. Second. Anybody awake out here? Thank yes. you, Karen. <laughs> um, questions, comments, discussion. Kathy. Um, I have a sort of a question comment about the communication committee. Mm -hmm. And I know I brought this up once before, and I'm, I may um, not make any sense, but anyway, I'll throw it out there. Um, I'm not sure that the communication committee should be a standing committee of the board. And the reason I say that is because I see the board's function as being policies and finance. I do think there should be a communication committee, but I think it should be a committee that's directed by the superintendent or his designee. Don't, don't hit me, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think board, there should be a board member or two on it. But I see it as an advisory committee somewhat similar to our other advisory committees. Um, so I just sort of throw that out there for consideration and um, you know, people may say I don't agree with that, I do agree with that, but I know that the board has made, in my estimation, progress in um, defining what board members' roles and responsibilities are and I think we've, I think we've made improvement um, in the years that I've been on the board and so I just sort of see this as another part of the consideration. Like I said, I'm not opposed to the communication committee, um, but I'm not sure that I see it as a standing committee of the board. I, I think of it more as an advisory or maybe something else. And, and I think it's important that the communication committee exist, um, but I want to be sure um, who's directing that committee, and I see it as a direction of maybe the superintendent or his designee. So. I throw that out there, and, and with no offense to anybody who's on the committee, because I don't mean it that way. Question? Other comments? I, I think that that makes perfect sense. Um, I would only um, question making um, staff chair it, because I think that comes with a financial component that we can't afford. Um, so if you make it advisory, we do have advisory committees that are chaired by um, board members, but that have a substantial staff membership to it. Um, like the wellness committee. Like the wellness committee, like the extracurricular committee. Um, so I just think that we may want to hesitate before putting a staff member as the chair of it. 
to me, one of the advantages of moving it to an advisory committee would be, and I do think it would be important to um, have a um, school board member play a, um, a leadership role it, with that um, committee, but to be able to include people in the community to really help us maybe get some things up and running and do some exciting things around communication, whether or not it's the website or whatever it might be. It seems like an opportunity that we should seize if uh, we have someone who has a background like Mary for it and also other members of the community we might be able to pull in to help us move forward and do some exciting things around it. And I'm not really saying that I have it all lined up. I'm not saying that. And I, and I um, you know, like I said, I look to Alan and he might say, gee, you're wrong about this and that's fine. <laughs> But um, I, I know that when board members are on committees that um, there, there may be an interpretation by others on the committee that they should do what the board member wishes for them to do. Um, and I'm not saying that's happening, I'm just saying that I've seen that type of thing in the past. And it concerns me because the question in my mind is what is the communications committee communicating? If it's communicating information um, about the schools, then it's not communicating board information, it's communicating school information. And I'd want to be sure that the superintendent was um, blessing it, I, I don't know what the word is, but making sure that the, the superintendent is aware of what's going out or what potentially is going out. The um, superintendent is a member of the communication committee, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. So. He, he has served on that committee since the beginning of its formation um, and has been aware of those projects. The doesn't always get there, but yes. Well, yeah, <laughs> but he, he's um, received the agendas and the minutes um, and has been a part, clearly part of the process of the major um, communication aspect of the, the committee in the past, which was the VIEW. Um, in fact, that's pretty much the only major communication project that the committee undertook um, and that was obviously with the um, heavy involvement of the superintendent. Linda? Uh, just, I've talked I was just going to kind of add a, kind of a comment here that sitting here listening to the discussion that's taking place, the more, I, the more discussion I hear, I think I'm leaning more towards it rather being a standing committee, be more of an advisory. Because as a standing committee, I would think, I would see, envision that the communications committee would be there to communicate more of the board practice, not the schools at large, where we are trying to, you know, provide the communication for for our district, for our schools, for our administrators. I, I do see this more of as, as an advisory role rather than a standing committee of the board. So you're you're saying to support it as an advisory versus a standing committee? Yeah. Yes. No, I think that's From what that I was saying. That's what I was saying. I think. Right. Yeah. That's what Kathy was saying. I think we're all saying yeah. the same thing. I think we're all saying the same thing. I have yet to hear anybody disagree. I just, the only yeah. thing I did was suggest that if you make a staff person and chair, there could be some financial obligation involved that we can't afford. Well, I'd be interested to see what. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to say, uh, interestingly, and I, I think I'm already saying this, this morning I had an opportunity to meet with Peter and with Mary to talk about the Communications Committee. And I thought we had an excellent meeting. In, in, into the discussion, and I'll certainly turn to both or either of them to speak to it. But I think one of the things that we talked about is if we uh, make it a committee that really looks at what is happening in our schools and how do we improve those. Uh, and I think it was Mary who spoke to the fact that she's looked at a, uh, at least uh, Edina mm -hmm. and at least one other school system. And what we talked about was perhaps what we need to do because I think this goes back to our initial plan of four years ago, is now look at what other systems do and how we plug that information in. Uh, I know Mary talked about the fact that the work that uh, Gary did on technology really opened some doors with that. Sure. So I, I too, I think it should be an advisory group. I, I feel very strongly about that. Uh, Rebecca has said something that I hadn't even thought about, which I think is important, is that we do have to look at the cost of putting somebody ahead of it. So that's something we would work out. But I think one of the things, and, and Peter did a, a great job, you know, instilling some ideas with us. But I think one of the things we thought about was perhaps we need to use a little more time to do some research on what some other systems have done. I think you said at Adina you saw a 95% increase in 
public awareness and participation. And public approval. I mean, yeah. I think it's a great beefing up your um, website is a great opportunity to build um, community awareness and community support um, for your schools. I think um, people are very invested in the schools in this community. And um, I think Gary showed us some great opportunities to expand what we're doing on our website that um, may make it even more interactive for people to get a sense of what's going on in the schools. And um, you know, as I was saying in Edina, um, they did do a survey and 95% um, of their community, they had a 95% approval rating for their schools. Um, oh. So, you know, I think that, uh, I think we should take advantage of, um, you know, some of the expertise that we have under this roof and in this community um, to build up, um, you know, at least the website and, you know, to, to build some um, to do a little community building for the schools and, and get some information out about all the great things that are going on. And one of the things that just dawned on me as you started speaking, I was looking beyond you at uh, one of our students and I'm looking over here, is that this is also a perfect committee to get our students involved oh, yeah. and, and selling and talking about our schools as well. Uh, we could do some really exciting things. When I looked at what was done with the play, and what is done with the um, uh, with the speech group uh, and the creativity that's there? That's another piece that really could work in mm -hmm. if communications, as uh, an advisory group, began to really look at how we can get out to the public uh, what we do and how we do it and how well we do it right. and how and how well we want to do it mm -hmm. and the things we need to change as well. I think it also complements our goal of technology mm -hmm. and sort of bringing our communication into the 21st century in terms of how we right. do it. And you know, a lot is available on the web now right. to do it well and effectively and reach more people. So right. it's a great opportunity. Hopefully teachers would be able to interface with this as well. Like Mr. Nielsen's class, for example, mm -hmm. with his um, news spot. I'm very impressed by that. That would be a great thing to stream on a website so people could see um, what, you know, how technology is involved, how we're trying to use technology in classrooms even, at, you know, at the younger stages. So. I would just like to follow up to, I think actually it has been sort of functioning as an advisory committee anyway because we do have teachers on that committee. Um, we've had, since its inception, we've had um, a representative from each of the schools um, on the committee. So, all right. Um, I just uh, did you make the original motion? I was just wondering if you want to change the motion. Um, I can amend the motion, but I, before I do that, I think yep. I may have another amendment. Okay. <laughs> um, am I on that committee, communications committee? Because I wasn't there at the meeting. Oh, this it was an just an impromptu <laughs> conversation. Oh, yeah. We're finishing a meeting uh, yeah, I think, we yeah. decided to stay and talk a little well, bit. Well, honestly, I actually don't remember being on this committee still, but if you, you are, would like, oh, you are. I am. Remember you left the workshop really? <laughs> That's right. This is what happened. <laughs> In fact, we almost made you chair again. <laughs> so, okay, no, then I guess there's no amendment uh, to that. So um, I'd just like to amend my first motion to move communications committee to advisory, under advisory committees. Okay, so the other motion is just going to die, and we have a new motion, which is to approve the school board committee structure and membership as presented, with the exception that the communications committee will be reclassified as an advisory committee. Okay. The person who seconded is there. Uh, oh, here. Second. Still staying. Is that a second? Okay. Now, any questions or comments on that motion? Actually, I have a quick question. You talk about here the ad hoc advisory committees being disbanded when the system has been set up. Would that take place with the communications committee, just like the other ones? Not necessarily. Okay. Because it uh, seems like something that we have to uh, continue. That would have to be. Well, actually, advisory committees, by definition, are established by the board to perform a specific function. A for example, study a particular problem or issue. The committee may make recommendations to the board but may not act for the board, and membership may include individuals who are not elected members of the board. So it, 
can stay up and running until we either reclassify or get rid of a committee. Actually, we have to vote to get rid of the to get rid of a committee or reclassify it. So when we say we're suggesting the committees as presented, that actually does reflect the creation of a new committee, which is teaching and learning and reclassification of other committees into advisory status. So every time we make a change like that, we need to vote on it. So that was a very good question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments for clarification? I'm wondering quickly if I should just go through before we vote, since we've done this together, the standing committees of the board, assuming this motion passes, passes, will be finance, human resources, policy, and teaching and learning. Um, our appointments would be to appointments are to dis town or district-wide committees, or even outside of the um, community. Would be alternative energy, CEF, technology, and I think paths needs to be added to that. Yes, and that's my fault. It's okay. Um, I will update that. And this, al this also will be on the website once it's updated and approved. And our advisory committees then would be communications, extracurricular, legislative liaison, positive action committee, um, sports done right, strategic planning, and wellness. Okay, anybody else see any other errors that need to be corrected? Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? 7-0, thank you. Okay, Ellen, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Consideration to approve the spending to offset the curtailment of state funds for 2008-2009 in the amount of $421,572. What you have again is document in your packet that talks about how we will do that now that we are quite certain that 421-572 is going to be the bottom line. Also, I want to talk about this because it will, again, open up some spending. The freeze will go off. I think the uh, administrators were told that today. Uh, I haven't seen a pile of purchase orders on my desk yet, but I'm sure some will come in. But what we are doing is this. Uh, we looked at the town's undesignated funds of $200,000. Uh, we have the school's contingency fund of $70,000, which will mean we'll have no contingency left. I, I just want to say this one more time so that everybody hears it is I do worry about that uh, because this is February and we have until the, uh, school closes in June uh, if we have some changes in population in the town for one thing or if we have some major catastrophe like we have a furnace blow up or something like that we are going to have to realign monies at that point to make that happen. I uh, looked at facilities, CIP and contracted services uh, total cut was $80,000, so the balance uh, in the accounts after the cut is $132,000. Remembering again, those are the things that maintain our buildings and keep them out. I will also say to you, it is that area where I have applied for a uh, bonding grant. And if we get that, then we will realign uh, monies accordingly. So I would then went to other accounts, we went to the substitutes account. We cut $15,000 from that, which leaves us $93,500. Uh, the staff development account, I cut $20,000 from that, which leaves me $81,700. Uh, supplies, we cut $20,000 from that, leaving $84,000. Books, we cut $15,72, which leaves us $62,400. And equipment, we cut $15,000, we have $16,300 left. With those cuts, it comes to $421,572. Now, I also do have a very clear step-by-step -step process, which I didn't give to you because I didn't know that that was necessary. I think you just needed to see the big picture. But this is where we will be making the adjustments in order to ensure that we have met our, our cut of $421,572.00. Can I have a motion to approve the listing of spending item spending cuts um, to address, to offset the curtailment of state funds for the current school year. So moved. Thank you, Karen. Second? So moved, second. Thank you, Peter. Questions or comments? I guess I'll be sort of a curmudgeon. Um, Alan, would you mind being a little more specific about what these things are so that that's out in the public? Yep. Um, I know that we, some of us are aware of what they are, but um, I think, like for instance, facilities. I know that you've applied to the town to the town bond money, but um, 
supplies, books. I think we know what books are. I'm not sure what supplies and equipment, but the CIP, could you be a little more specific? Sure, I can take you down through them. Uh, the first one that has multiple pieces in it is substitutes accounts. What we did is we took $10,000 out of the Pond Cove uh, account and middle school, we took $5,000 out of it for the 15,000 that we took out. Under staff development, uh, we took money out of uh, Pond Cove at 1,300, middle school at 2,000, high school at 2,000. Uh, then we had district wide of a 2,000, 10,000, 2,000 and 700 to make those. Uh, we looked at supplies. Uh, we, we gave them the totals of at Pond Cove, $6,000, middle school at $6,000, and high school at $8,000. And the, making sure you understand, that leaves money in their budgets. It does not completely deplete their budgets. Uh, the book account, we needed to take fifteen seventy two dollars out. Uh, we took that out of Pond Cove because Pond Cove had spent most of its money, and whereas the others had not. So I took that out of the Pond Cove one. And in equipment, we had high school equipment at $5,000. We had Achievement Center software at $568. Uh, we had middle school at $3,000, uh, district-wide at $2,000, and health at $4,432. Uh, so those added up together uh, came to the bottom line when you add the $200,000 to it, to the $421,572. Will this be available on the website? It can be. I just a suggestion, and the rest of the board might not like that, but I, I, I think it would be good to have it on the website so that if somebody asks, well, what is that, and what are those numbers, they can be, because the budget's on the website, so um, yep, we it's, know we it's facts, yep. and yep. If, it's, if it's out there, then people can look at it. And well, in fact, it represents the new budget for this year. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It right, does. it does. So. Yep. Right. Yep, definitely, we will put that on there tomorrow. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have one, Alan. Yes. The, the bond money. Yes. If that, is that already designated for specific items, or if that <coughs> in, can it offset the loss of the contingency? The loss of... I mean, the, when you take the contingency okay. down to 70000 you're taking 80000 yes. out we of... We could look at that. Right now, what we're looking at it for is under the... Um, CIP, but it could go to the contingency amount. If, if we get it, we will look, look at it and see how we manage it at that point. Uh, again, we've, we've asked for 128,000, which uh, I'm looking at Pauline just to be sure I remember this correctly. That was for the uh, we would for the replacement at the high school, uh, middle school of the roof. It also was some uh, some things, major projects that still had to be done at the high school in order to do that. They are in the CIP amount. But could be realigned accordingly. And I would bring that back to you if we get it. Okay. I don't know, uh, from what I understand from the town manager, I don't know when that is actually going to go before the town council, but I have turned the request in to the town manager. I actually have the bond request that you put yeah. in. Yeah. It's on. Um, okay, it is on the back. I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that. So it's uh, roof replacement, middle school locker room, <clears throat> high school roof repair in the high severity areas. Trim repair locker room side in 30s building for 227,000, and retrofitting 10 classrooms with mechanical and light centers for 20,000. Oh, good! I'm glad to see those in there. Yeah, was, mm -hmm. and that's actually in next year's budget. Well, so that would these funds be used for next year? If the bond comes through, I thought I thought I saw some of them. Maybe I've okay. So, what ones did you ask? Where are you actually? I think most of them. Maybe I'm imagining it. I saw so many numbers. I thought that in these specific items in were next included year's. in next year's budget. Yes, because if they don't get approved in the bond, then we mm -hmm. need to do them next year. Oh. So we have to put them on in the budget for next year. Okay, so will that approval hopefully happen beforehand so that you know what you're looking at for next year's budget? Okay. All right. Any other? Yeah, Thank you, you could move back to that's what I was thinking. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Seven zero. Before we go on to committee reports, can I backtrack really quickly? We approved our school board committee structure and membership and goals. 
Would it be fair to ask each of the committees, now that we've approved them, to draft their own set of goals in the next couple of months, which would then support the school board's goals, goals for themselves and then bring them, those back to the board? Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, committee report. I'm going to apologize. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The field yes. trip. I have, a, I have a field trip one. Uh, this is the late one, and I'm yeah. the first to admit that, okay? No. But it is an important one, and so I did bring it to you tonight. We just got it today. Uh, and this is from Gretchen McNulty, and this is the uh, Model UN, Model UN trip. Uh, I did ask Jeff if he could speak to it briefly uh, to explain what it is for. Uh, it is, <laughs> while he's getting up there, I would tell you that it is dated for the end of February, so I really needed to get it out today to you. I thought we were going to go through the entire year without any late proposals for field trips, but here we go. We've gotten to February. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, this is a trip to Boston University MIT Model United Nations. Um, the students uh, will miss, I think, only two periods of class time as a result of the trip. Most of it is on a weekend. Um, they leave on February 28th, and there are the appropriate number of chaperones and mixed gender, and the forms are here. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer anything that I can. Sarah and Andrew might be going on the trip, right? Sarah? I can't actually, can't. but I did this same trip two years ago, and it was probably the best thing I've done in all of high school. Not this one. Okay. But it's going to be good. Senioritis is already here. <laughs> <laughs> they have more than done their share and represented as well at multiple model UNs. So. Jeff, wasn't this part of the original proposal that um, Richard you know, made at the beginning of the year? Yeah, she talked about it um, when we, when I think the Harvard trip was approved. But I think the intention was to come back and get approval for the later one as well. I don't think the board formally approved it. I think Gretchen let you know that it was going to be coming. I think yes. that's my recollection. Yes, she did. She said she, she wasn't sure that there was a chance, and so she did have it on her, on her report. Right. Um, can I have a motion to approve the Model UN trip to Boston as presented or as requested? So moved. Thank you, Mary. Second? Second. Thank you, Karen. Any questions or comments? I'm, I'm assuming that the um, principal and superintendent approve these? Yeah, and we're, we're going to sign them in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Mm. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Thank you. Zero. Okay. Um, committee reports. Back to here. Are there any um, committee chairs who would like to comment or share um, reports from their committee? I'll start right next to me and work that way. Okay. Linda. Actually, uh, I would like to update everybody on the Human Resources Committee. We actually had a meeting this morning. Um, went very well. We're in the process of establishing a timeline not only for the superintendent's evaluation, but the board evaluation as well. Uh, building in a time for check-in throughout the year to check on where we are on the status of our goals to coincide with the annual vote that we have to take for the state's approval um, at the end of the year. Uh, working very diligently to make sure that the process runs a lot smoother gives us a lot more time to do some re reflective thought. Some ideas that were thrown out is actually having the board do their self-evaluation over the summertime and getting together uh, at the end of the summertime, right before the start of the school year, so we can establish our goals for the next, for the upcoming year. Um, and granted, it's probably going to be a little choppy this year because of a change, but we haven't done a board evaluation in at least three years. So um, trying to get it back on schedule again and getting it set up. Um, we're, I, we had some sample forms that we looked at today that went out to the other members of the committee. We're all going to get back together next month to kind of try and finalize, <clears throat> get a good idea of just what we want our evaluation to look like. And we're still working on the superintendent's evaluation. And we want to make sure that his evaluation coming up is also going to mesh with 
uh, former evaluations that have been done. So hopefully we'll be seeing those documents come out very soon. Thank you, Linda. Rebecca. Um, I just want to report on one thing that the, the policy committee discussed um, around substance abuse policy. Um, there was a survey that was held um, around the policy and in particular the contract. And based on the feedback and the opinions of the um, district leadership team, the committee agreed that um, a public forum should be held um, to uh, allow discussion of the following aspects of the policy. Um, the reach of the policy, um, in other words, school versus non-school hours, self-reporting aspects of the policy contract, um, methodology of communicating the policy to parents, um, uh, frequency during the year, or rather through coaches and captains, or um, also kind of a distinction between communicating to first-time parents versus parents of older children and the contract in general. Um, Jeff is um, compiling some comparisons of other districts' policies and approaches, and Jeff and Alan are going to be coming to the committee with a proposed date for the forum. Thank you, Rebecca. Anyone else? Kathy? Um, I just wanted to... Um uh, publicly say that the Finance Committee is now a committee of the whole. And I heard from most people, and they it's easier for them to do 6.30 versus 6 o'clock. Um, the suggestion was made, and I think it was a good one, that we would do that before our workshops. So the Finance Committee is going to meet at 6.30 before our workshops, assuming that moves our workshops to 7.30. Now, <laughs> having said that, I'm sitting here looking at the meeting, realizing that we have a finance committee meeting on February 24th at 6.30 at the high school library. We are scheduled to have a budget hearing at 7 o'clock that night. So I'm not sure, and I sort of look at Alan and Pauline, if we can, on that particular evening, if we can make that happen in a half, if the finance committee can be happening in a half an hour that evening, or if we should be moving the budget um, hearing to 7.30. we're all right, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. We should do it in half an hour. Half an hour, okay. I just, I saw this yeah. and I thought, let's correct it while everybody's here, so, okay. So that's February 24th. That's February 24th, yes, which is the Tuesday after we get back from vacation. So I just wanted to be clear. So we'll have the Finance Committee meeting at 6.30 and the budget hearing and um, workshop at 7. Thanks for that clarification, Kathy. Any other? Yes, committees? Trish, I would like Go. to say a few things about the Wellness Advisory Committee and the Sports and Right Advisory Committee, but I'm getting a, a stare from Linda, so I'm not sure <laughs> if it's acceptable since it's no longer officially a standing committee. <laughs> um, but the Wellness Committee, ha we just had a wonderful meeting February 2nd as a district-wide wellness committee, and we had the opportunity to reflect upon our accomplishments over the past two years. And it was exciting. Sometimes you forget the things that you've accomplished. And by going back and reviewing them, you can say, wow, we actually have done some things and have made some progress. And what we decided to do was come up with a three to five year plan for sustainability to bring wellness, incorporate it more throughout the system in the schools. And we are going to hopefully be presenting that to the board in, um, April, in excuse me, May or June and we'll keep you abreast of that. There were some incredible articles in the school board journal, which hopefully you've had the opportunity to look at, and I will also stick them in your um, mailboxes if you haven't already seen them. And we are also doing some exciting things at Middle School Pond Cove around the Capricornian Project. A lot of people have filled out surveys, both parent surveys and student surveys, all the way, um, K, not K, but um, first grade up through eighth grade and have had a lot of different um, faculty and staff and myself working on that and that's been exciting. Uh, as far as sports done right is concerned, we are now back up and running with that and we have pulled together um, or started to compile a list of commendations and recommendations for what we'd like to work on as a district and we will, um, once we pull that together, we will be presenting that to the board after it first goes to the Sports and Right group up in Augusta. And they will look at what the work we've done, see if we're missing anything or if they have issues with anything before we present it to the board. So that's how that plays out. And then I just wanted to make everybody aware that um, CEF is going to be, um, going to have their spring grant cycle coming up and all of the applications from the 
faculty or staff are due uh, Wednesday, March 11th, and I think they've sent that email out to the administrators today. And there's going to be an emphasis on professional development. So it's an exciting opportunity to hopefully get some of the teachers to write some interesting grants um, for professional development, especially given the limited or the reduction in staff development months. So um, we had a good meeting with CEEP last night. They're changing some of how they're going to probably raise money, and they're doing some interesting things, and there's some great leadership there, and they're certainly a huge asset to uh, our schools, especially right now. And CEEP is not even a committee. That's a, an appointment that I reported on. <laughs> Just two, yeah. two uh, pieces of information. Uh, first of all, uh, as many of you know, Jeff Thorak is not here this evening. I just wanted to make public that Jeff did lose his dad uh, this past weekend. Uh, wake was today and the funeral is tomorrow morning. And so I, we all wish our very best to Jeff and his family. It's been a very difficult last week for him as they've gone through this process. And uh, so again, to just let him know that we're thinking of him and, and what he's going through at this point in time. It just dawned on me, as you were saying that, Karen, the other piece that I should mention to you, if you remember a while ago, we, uh, I think it was Trish and Kathy, and I think Karen, you joined us, to talk about people who wanted to do an alumni directory for Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, I've just recently heard from the woman at Harris Publishing, and I have also looked at the contract that we have uh, with CEEF, it's going to be in combination with CEEF, and we do have a contract which, after several discussions, uh, sets up a plan so that if there is any reason that we have to shift the process, uh, we can do it at that point. Uh, I have checked with the people who served with me, and I remember we talked about it as a board a while ago. But just to let you know that I am going to sign that contract and that we will begin moving very quickly to start setting that process up. Uh, to begin developing that alumni directory. Thank you, Alan. Um, I don't think there are any members of the public here who are commenting on agenda items, so we can trisk. Could, oh. could I say one thing? Oh, well? sure, I'm sorry. Member of the public or... <laughs> Do you member of the public or... Yes. <laughs> Do I have to go up there as a member of the public? <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to comment on something that was on the agenda, which was... Um, the resignation of Ogden Williams, and I don't want that to go by without a recognition of what an outstanding teacher he was. I mean, he is, um, we were fortunate enough to have Ogden one year, uh, truly one of the most innovative and creative um, teachers I've ever seen. And I think um, students mention him frequently in graduation speeches. Uh, it's, he's a town treasure, and I just really um, think we owe him a debt of gratitude in our district for all that he's done for the kids and the creativity and, and the way he's really tried to create lifelong learners and the love of learning. And um, I just want to express my personal gratitude. So. Thank you, Mary. I'm sure that there are many. I, none of my children were fortunate enough to have him, but watching from the outside, I would agree with everything you said, so thank you. Thanks um, for letting me say that. Any school board agenda requests? Um, announcement of upcoming meetings. As Kathy mentioned, there are, most of the upcoming meetings are dealing with the budget, and I, she's gone over those meetings. The rest of the committee meetings have been, are on the website, I guess, Linda, the HR committee met today. Is there an, another date that's been set? Yes, March 10th. Okay. That's the only one that would vary from what is there, and that will yeah. also be posted on the website. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you.